I appreciate you coming along with me as we study our way through the Gospel of Matthew and through the life and teaching of Jesus, learn what it means to be a follower and disciple of Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose on the third day, the first fruits of those that will rise from the dead. And this uh, portion, we're going to just read one verse, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 3. For Herod had seized John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. This one verse points to a sordid and sorry affair. Now, little backstory here. Herod the Great, the ruler when Jesus had been born, had multiple wives and multiple children. Herodias was a daughter of a son of the Herod, of Herod the Great. So in other words, a granddaughter of Herod the Great. And her father, the son of Herod, was murdered by his father. Herodias was married off to her father's half-brother, or who we could call her uncle. Now, are you confused yet? It gets worse. This Herod was not a ruler, but he actually lived his adult years in the city of Rome. One day in 26 of the Common Era, his half-brother Herod Antipas shows up. He visits. He was a half-brother to this Roman Herod, which makes him an uncle to Herodias. Herod Antipas and Herodias fall in love with each other, divorce their spouses, and marry each other. To have John the Baptist attack this marriage is not all that surprising, as it was highly, highly irregular. Now let's throw in a little bit more of the backstory. Herod Antipas's first wife was a princess. She was Phaecellus, a daughter of the ruler of Nabatea. Now, the ruler of Nabatea was a person named Arteus IV Philopatris. The capital of Nabatea was the city of Petra. It was not a significant kingdom. But you do not divorce the king's daughter without consequences. I think that's probably just a, an unspoken rule of life. Herod Antipas would be forced to fight a skirmish with the Nabataeans over his divorce of his first wife. Well, that did not go well. And what happened is Herod Antipas had to be bailed out by the Romans. Now, this side of the story in no way is directly related to what we're talking about in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 3, and yet it is all important because clearly this divorce of Herod Antipas and the marriage to Herodias had created all sorts of kerfuffles and consequences. And needless to say, Herod Antipas and Herodias wanted to move on and put things down and leave it at that. So it's not all that surprising there was a desire on his part to silence his critics. Herodias was the daughter of Aristobulus II, whose mother was Mary Amnon, a wife of Herod the Great. At this point, understand, the Herod's family is like, you know, knowing two football teams that are playing. And I'm thinking of American football teams, right? There's a whole slew of names and players to get right and their role and function. It's kind of like that. And you know what? It's confusing, even for me. Her Herodias's grandmother was a Hasmonean princess. The Hasmoneans were the last ruling dynasty of an independent Judea in the late second century BCE. The Roman Empire at this point was coming to dominate the area and would in time absorb Judea into its empire. 
Herodias, in that sense, had actual Jewish roots through her grandmother. But she also had lived in Rome and seems to have absorbed from that uh, some very pagan sens sensibilities. Antipas, who lived in the work, lived and worked in an area that was Jewish, seemed more concerned about Jewish sensibilities than she, even though he was not strictly Jewish. Now, remember, the Herodians were the Intermedium people who had been forcibly converted you know, during the Mas Maccabean period. So they were not Jewish ethnically, but Jewish in a sense, religiously. Herod Antipas's mother, Mouth Face, was actually of Samaritan descent. Now, if you're getting confused at this point, guess what? Even I am keeping, having a hard time keeping this all straight. When we look at families, and this is the great takeaway of all of this, we have to acknowledge the power of history on them. Now, it'd be great if all of us had a family history that was pristine, good, wholesome, and holy. I'm not saying all of us come from the Herodian side of things, but I think in a sense, most of us, in terms of our family history, probably lean a little bit more to this way than the good, wholesome, and pristine side of things. Now, let me offer one example, which I'm somewhat familiar with which is the role of alcoholism on family and family history. If you work with or have experience of or have some sense of this, you understand the destructive power of alcoholism on families and family histories. In other words, it has a destructive streak that runs generations. You do not grow up in the environment of an alcoholic home or family and just walk away from it as an adult. You learn in your parents, and this is true of everyone, or caregivers' home, how to live life by how they live life, whether they live that life good, bad, or indifferent. The, Her the Herodian family shows what is all too familiar dysfunctional and destructive family traits are passed on to new generations. It is easy to dismiss the Herodian clan as a very, very bad soap opera, but it tells the truth that is true in every age. To be Christian is wonderful. To be Christian can mean we are the ones in the family who have the, the ability to break the dysfunctional and destructive cycle of our family history. The problem, of course, is we may be products of that destructive and dysfunctional family history, and we will always lean to reproduce what was destructive and dysfunctional in our family history. And don't think for a moment, just because I have accepted Jesus as Christ and as Lord and as Savior, it goes away just like that. The danger is we can reproduce our faith in the shadow of that. If this is our story, let us by grace acknowledge that tendency and by grace begin to work through that unfortunate baggage we have so that by grace we can create a new trajectory for our family going forward so that a future generation can have the freedom from the past that we did not have.